All right. Well, we have four very special guests today, that, and they represent various parts of Sanford University. And so we have um, Rachel Belter with us. She's with the Office of Spiritual Life. Um, o in particular, she oversees the Global Mission Scholars Program. We have Scott Guffin, who's in charge of the Christian Ministry Department, who definitely has uh, an emphasis on missions there. Um, we have Darren White, who is Executive Director of Sports Analy Analytics and Professor of Marketing. Uh, and we also have uh, Scott Bickle. Um, some of you may not be familiar with him. He is in the College of Health Sciences, and he's the Director for the Office for Faith and Health. health. So um, I'm uh, excited to uh, have them here because I've been able to get to know them over the years. Um, some people have kind of think of Sanford and Beeston as, as being a little disconnected, but I, since I've been here, I've had the privilege of um, partnering with all of them in certain ways, and, and I'm looking forward to, to y'all hearing about what they do. So let's go ahead and go down the road. Introduce yourselves a little, you know, give a little bit longer introduction than what I just said, and uh, just tell us who you are, more about what you do, and give us kind of an overview of your department's involvement in cross-cultural missions. Thank you. My name is Felicia Belter. Most people call me Fish. Um, it comes in handy on a college campus to be called Fish. Um, I met a student today, and he said, should I call you Miss Fish? And I was like, only like preschoolers call me that. So uh, if you see me, please say hello. Say hello. Uh, I love to meet new people and interact with people. I am actually a 2000 grad of Beeson Divinity School, so David was saying that the Global Center was old, so I guess I fall in that regime. But um, yeah, so I graduated um, Beeson with my MDiv in 2000 and worked at a local church for a few years doing college ministry. Then um, after a couple of years, I taught um, world religions um, through like Phoenix University locally here. Uh, I got invited to come back to campus. And so um, working with the Office of Spiritual Life, like David said, specifically the Global Mission Scholars Program, I've been here almost 10 years. Um, man, it's such a gift. Like, I adore college students. So um, I'm just thankful to be on this campus. Our office specifically reaches out to hopefully every Sanford student on this campus to try to engage them to walk more closely in their faith and to walk more closely with Christ, their Savior. So that's our purpose for our office in general. My specific job is I work with students who feel called to missions. And so there's not another program like this on campus that exists outside of like an academic program where it's specifically intended for students, but over the, or under the umbrella of the Office of Spiritual Life. So even in that vein of us hoping students get more connected in their walk with Christ, our goal is that if a student comes into this campus, and they're saying they have a call to missions, our goal is just to keep that right in front of their faces and right in front of their hearts so that they're encouraged to be able to walk that more closely over the next four years. My name is Scott Guffin, and I chair the Department of Christian Ministry. And to tell you how old I am, um, somebody on the timeline taught me when I was a student <laughs> here. So uh, Dr. Carl Worley was uh, one of my professors here. Yeah, that makes you really old. Um, I came here in 2017 after 32 years of church-based ministry. I was a pastor and um, came here to develop the new Christian ministry degree program. And uh, we launched that in 2018. The focus of it has always been Great Commission centered. Uh, my background is a PhD in evangelism with uh, minors in New Testament missions. My first hire was J.D. Payne, who has now written, I think, 16 books on missions and evangelism. Um, his PhD is in evangelism with minors in New Testament and missions, so we kind of had a theme going there, right? And uh, we, uh, we launched in 2018, fall of 2018, with a uh, focus, like I said, on Great Commission Disciple Making. Two of our key classes that uh, students get when they come into the program are Disciple Making 1, Disciple Making 2, where they are both taught and trained on how to make disciples. We uh, also, in 2019, developed the first full-blown just missions curriculum. It's all it is uh, that Sanford has had on this campus, and uh, that's our intercultural engagement minor. And uh, Dr. Payne drove the development of that and oversees that. So if any of you guys are undergrads are looking for a good minor, um, it's 18 hours. We designed it so it's it's doable for a lot of students, and uh, and, and that's our focus is to uh, teach and train students to uh, go out and engage their world with the Great Commission for Jesus Christ. 
Well, great. My name is Scott Bickle, um, as David mentioned, and I, I have three jobs at Sanford. So I serve as, as an associate dean in the School of Health Professions in the College of Health Sciences. I'm also a professor of physical therapy over there, and then I also have the opportunity to serve as the director of the Office for Faith and Health with the, within the College of Health Sciences. And really, in terms of um, faith and health in CHS, is we have three goals for every student that comes through CHS. And so CHS is, is, is um, it's probably 2,000 students in CHS. A lot of them are the graduate professional students. Um, we do have several undergraduate programs as well. But for every student that comes through CHS, we'd like, we'd like three things. Number one, if they hear the gospel message at some point while they're here at Sanford. Number two, that they start to consider how's their faith going to impact their work as a health care provider. And then number three, how's the faith of their patients going to impact any of the services that they may be, may be providing? And so we try to provide resources to faculty to, to try to do those things. We offer opportunities for students like combos, cadres. Um, we're starting a new thing called a CHS passport where they have to get a little faith in credit, faith and health um, opportunities along, along the way during their, their time as a student at Sanford. But every time, as David mentioned, um, we seem a little, CHS is oftentimes disconnected um, across the other side of campus, but every time I, I get the chance to come over here to the Global Center, I always learn something new. I feel like I'm an amateur when it comes in, in terms of mission and evangelism and things like that. So every chance I get, I try to come over here because every time I learn something new. So thank you for having me. Thanks for the advertisement. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Darren White. Is that okay? Everybody good? So Darren White, I am uh, the executive director for the Center for Sports Analytics uh, over in the Brock School of Business. Um, has anybody ever seen the movie Moneyball? Billy Bean, all that? Yeah. So uh, we were the very first school in the country to have a Moneyball program. And you're probably thinking, like, why is he up there speaking on this group? <laughs> and so, um, well, the reason why is because uh, we have over 150 students in our business school that want to work in sports when they graduate. They want to work either on the business side of sports, they want to work with coaches, but they want to work in sports. And uh, one thing about it is when you work in sports, you have a tremendous amount of cultural influence. And we, we recognize that. We recognize that you know by working in sports, you're going to have a platform or an opportunity. And so one of our goals for our students is to help them understand that they are going to, number one, have that influence, but then also think about how do we leverage that influence for the kingdom. And we put that out in front of them right from the get-go, from day one. And so mentioning cadres, we have a cadre, uh, a good friend of mine. I go to Church of Brook Hills with uh, Rockies here with me today, and we do a cadre with uh, all the freshmen uh, that looks at biblical theology and sort of looks at how the Old Testament points to Christ, and there's some of the nations involved in all of that. Um, and we do a number of other things as well. We're, we we run an, uh, we help run an organization called the Daniel Summit. In fact, I think that last slide on the slide deck there. Yeah, I actually brought I brought slides, so that's <laughs> he was prepared. <laughs> so yeah, so the Daniel Summit is a, a group that we help run um, with one of my board members, and uh, it's it's basically executives that work in the world of sports uh, that want to use their platform for for kingdom advancement. And so this is a. Next year, we're going to be meeting at um, Passion City Church. Uh, this past year, we were out at, in California at um, North Coast Calvary Chapel. And so we, uh, we always partner with the church. But, uh, but yeah, so this is the sort of thing we do. We just uh, we want to really think about the fact that we're going to have influence. And so how do we leverage that for the kingdom? And what does that look like? And so that's a big part of what we do. Yeah. All right. Well, um, Global Voices, our tagline is stories from the nations. And so we want people who come here to these events to, to get a sense for how God's working around the world, what he's doing. And so I want to launch straight into that. Um, give me the single most encouraging story um, or unique story that's involving a, a student of yours or a graduate who are now involved. Um, so I want to tell you all a story of a student that graduated a couple years ago. Her name is Lauren Stearns. She is serving in Berlin. And um, some of our former GS, GMS are here, just like their, light, their faces light up when you talk about her because she's just one of those people that is so welcoming and so hospitable in her heart. She is serving in Berlin in a community where the gospel, <laughs> like the light, is so dim there. 
but she carries the light with such strength and such humility and such beauty. And one of the most amazing things that happened this year, because she's been there for about two and a half years, um, she got invited to a local television show to talk about one of the ministry options that she has while she's there, one of the ministry opportunities. And they interviewed her on the air to ask her, why do you invite people around your table? What is it that you hope to to make happen at this table of hospitality that you serve these meals at? And she got to share the gospel on national television in Berlin. So that made me so happy for her, just like a, a glorious way that God is making himself known among the nations. So just one, huh? Uh, yeah. So there's so many. Uh, we have students who, you know, they just, they. Uh, what I love is they don't see anything as impossible. And so, like, we had a student who served the summer in Paris with the Olympics, he, you know, one who served in Saudi Arabia. We've had students in Clarkston, Georgia, just kind of all over the place. Um, but I think if I had to narrow it down to one that was most encouraging it would be a student who, um, I'm just going to use her first name, Molly, who graduated uh, last year from Christian ministry. Um, when she came into the program as a freshman, had some significant health issues and, and other things, but she had a heart for the nations and um, said, my intention, my calling is to be a missionary. And I thought, okay, you know, we'll see what happens. And, and I've learned over and over that I'm really not good at calling people. Um, that's God's job. And, uh, and, and if I were to uh, determine people's calling, I would get it wrong so often. But um, I thought, okay, maybe Molly can work, you know, stateside for a missions organization or something like that. She has a real passion for it. Uh, long story short, she graduated from our program before she'd even graduated, um, had been hired by the International Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention. She's doing a two-year journeyman um, in an area we can't even tell you where it is because it's uh, that secure. And so I can just give you her first name and tell you she's in a very secure location working with the IMB for two years. Um, and just blows me away. I, I get those emails from her and, um, you, you know, the, the communication from the work she's doing on the field, and I'm just blown away at uh, seeing how God's worked in her life. The former student that comes to my mind, we'll just call her Jay, <clears throat> and just this will just maybe try to encourage some students who are praying about what to do. I don't really know exactly what I'm supposed to do, and I want, to, want all the details laid out before them, but Jay was a, she graduated as a, from an undergraduate, from her undergraduate program um, and became a journeyman uh, for a couple of years in East Asia. Didn't know what that meant. She knew she, she loved Jesus. She wanted to uh, share Jesus with others, but she also wanted to be a physical therapist and she was kind of torn between the two um, and she, she didn't, she didn't know what to do. And so she went and served for a couple of years as a journeyman. Then um, God called her called her back to the states to get her physical therapy training and so she did that um, again had it had a desire to to go to the mission field um, share the gospel with the unreached people groups uh, but she had a mountain of student loan debt and she then just felt just felt like she couldn't go and so what did she do she just worked and um, persevered and made disciples here in Birmingham while she was here working paying off her student loans paid off her student loans and then you know, shortly thereafter, uh, an opportunity, the Lord presented an opportunity to go back to East Asia, work with a um, former mentor that she, she had worked with as a journeyman, and she had the opportunity to go over there in sa same country in East Asia and work as a physical therapist as part of a church planning group um, sharing Jesus with people. And just, again, not know, she didn't plan that. Um, she didn't plan that from day one, but the Lord just works these things in the in the lives of his people to um, where we don't know what the what the purpose is there's an ultimate long-term purpose and that's been my most encouraging story seeing that just from from a 30,000 foot perspective uh yes so could you go to the uttermost slide Thank you. thanks <laughs> yeah one more there we go so uh this organization uttermost sports is an organization that we've uh been very involved with for the last 15 years and so I've had students that have uh, yeah, that work with them in different levels but one student in particular that comes to mind his name is David and uh, and so he actually goes back way back uh, so I used to be a college soccer coach before I'm doing what I'm doing now David was actually my team captain way back in the day and uh, and so David now and his wife have been serving in Southeast Asia using under the platform of uttermost sports uh, they um, most recently spent about a decade in India on the coast and they started a mountain biking and surfing 
uh, business, if you will. And so they were doing mountain biking and surfing and great platform for meeting, you know, meeting folks and, and, uh, and all that. Um, and just in general, I'll, I'll say sports is an incredibly great way to build relationships because it's, it's, you, you know, it's ubiquitous. It goes across all cultures. If I, I can take a soccer ball and go literally anywhere in the world and have immediate friends, right? You can just, uh, you can, it, it, it just breaks down all cultural barriers and you can, you can be friends. If you're, uh, particularly if you're, particularly soccer, soccer is particularly good at that, which is my sport. Um, but, uh, but, but that, and that's what this organization does. In fact, go to the screen, if you would, with the, all the countries on it. Uh, I think it was one, there we go. So these are the different countries that Uttermost has, has worked in using sport as their platform. Uh, and the, 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 the ways are just endless. And, and again, we've been involved, uh, students in my program in, in a lot of different ways. Some of them on short term. Uh, we've had students that have gone over and spent time in Saudi Arabia helping helping start soccer for uh, for women, you know, younger younger ladies. We've we've done things in Iraq with them, uh, Jordan, and, and different places like that. So this is this is sort of our ministry partner, if you will, that allows us to execute on what we're trying to accomplish. So. So I started with that question, like one single story, because we have a limited time, and I don't trust Scott Guffin to be brief, all right? <laughs> and so, <laughs> so uh, we're doing well on time. So now, more stories. Uh, tell us, in particular, graduates who finished your program, now they've gone off. Um, so encourage us more. Um, so one of the beautiful things about our program is that we tell students when they come in, we really want them to leverage their major for the sake of the gospel among the nations. So actually overlap with Scott, overlap with the College of Health Sciences. We haven't had a sports analytics student yet, but I'm like, ooh, how well, can yeah. we partner together? Um, but we have students from all different majors across campus. So it's journalism, business, education, um, health sciences, nursing, pre-med. Um, we have a student who graduated a couple of years ago and his call was to veterinary science. and you know i'm like okay god can do anything um but it was really exciting he our students are encouraged to go to missions conferences during their time in our program and so we actually went to one a few of us students a few of us and students went together to one locally and we're browsing around they have to do an internship through our program um, for a summer and so this student was saying you know maybe i can just use spanish i don't necessarily have to use veterinary science and we're walking around to one of these tables and he opens a pamphlet that's laying there, and it's literally working with large animals in North Africa, Middle East. And I mean, his mind was just blown to see that God could use anything. Like God desires to use the giftings that he's given us to make his name great. Like he's gonna do it. He's excited about that more than we are. And so the student ended up not doing his internship through that program, but he did go to Spain and he was able to partner with um, a local, one of our actual GMS grads um, that had gone before him. So he partnered with that student working through a church, um, through church growth, church planting. And he also worked in a local vet clinic and he was able to fund a believer who was a veterinarian. And he worked alongside this um, female vet in Spain for the summer. And his primary gospel sharing experience was with her son. So it was so exciting to see that God has these beautiful intentions for us, knowing that even God was answering the prayers of that mom to be able to send someone to share the gospel intimately with her own child. That's cool. Yeah, the, uh, I would say that, that our stories, and, and I promise not all of our graduates are females that start with the letter M, but uh, I've talked about Molly, but then I would also talk about Madeline and Maggie. Uh, and uh, so, so Madeline is one of our graduates from this past year, and she is currently fundraising, but also intends to go and do work with campus outreach in New Zealand for two years. And so, um, she's she's headed that way. She's um, she's one of those students who might routinely be late to class, and her excuse was, "I, I just led a kid to the Lord on Ben Brown Plaza," and I was like, "Okay, you get a pass for that," you know. <laughs> So and, gracious. Uh, yeah, she is our, our discipler and is going to do great things. Um, Maggie is actually working with a, a local, more local firm that uh, it's called Filters of Hope that goes out and, and uses filters to get uh, into places to, to provide clean water as a way of getting the gospel. Um, I would also be remiss if I didn't mention that you just talked about in the video Julia Higgins, 
Um, Julia Higgins is our most recent faculty hire. If you guys haven't met Dr. Julia Higgins, you need to meet her um, and come hear her when she does her Global Voices thing. Yeah, fantastic. I'll tell you two quick stories. One is from a student who, um, she, she was an undergraduate uh, kinesiology major, but minored in Spanish, and show, so she had, uh, I think, lived abroad one semester learning Spanish, and show, so she had this language she wanted to use, and um, we, we have a, we had a pro bono clinic in an area of town where there are a lot of Spanish-speaking uh, patients, and so she would just come on the days she was not assigned to go. She would just come because she wanted to use her Spanish and, and connect with people. Um, and you know, she has been praying about where to go, what to do, how to use this. And uh, my small group was just serving here locally at a, at a local ESL thing through the Church of Burke Hills. And who do I run into? This student who's using that Spanish language and using her skills and gifts and talents to serve others, um, to, to reach the nations here locally. Um, but I also have another student who um, had gotten introduced to um, the nations through short-term mission trips, like a lot, of, like a lot of people do. And he started going on those pretty regularly um, and now is serving in North Africa with, uh, with another former student, and they're both physical therapists, um, trying to figure out how to use that platform um, in North Africa. They're currently, um, um, they were you know, learning language and still then transitioning to try to find out how to, how to in, get their work um, involved and find, find, um, find jobs over there. But just again, just, just students you know, who were following God's plan for the life at that given time and not knowing where that was going to lead. And next thing you know, they're living in North Africa. I can ask this question. Um, a lot of times people feel a call, pull to missions. Uh, the students um, feel like they can't really go because they're just looking at the funding and then they just decide, no, this isn't going to work. Um, what would you say to them? How would you encourage them, encourage them to think about funded? Yeah, well, um, I would say, and this is, I want to say this probably because I've been thinking about it, but like the very first thing that we are doing when we wake up each morning as a follower of Christ is preaching the gospel to ourselves. So either I believe that God is in control and I'm not, or I don't. And if, when I talk to students, because you can imagine being a college student, money is like a a big deal anyway. I guess it's a big deal to everybody, but for a college student who doesn't have as much expendable money, asking for money can be very um, humiliating. I would like to call it humbling, but for them sometimes it feels humiliating, um, and it feels like you're asking for something for nothing, but reminding them, like, God is moving. God is on the move, and he has such a good plan. He's created this story inside of you to tell of his goodness. He's going to take care of it. So waking up, preaching the gospel to myself. Like, I can't do it on my own. I'm going to need him, and he is going to provide because he wants his name to be let let out among the nation so that everybody can hear from him. Yeah, I would say that, you know, two of the things you hear often, but we hear them often because they're true, and that's that nothing is impossible with God, and that where God calls you, God's going to provide for you. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have to work, that you don't have to give feet to it and make phone calls and talk to people and have a lot of conversations, but it does mean that, uh, that that God can bring funding out of places. You know the old statement in the Old Testament, he owns a cattle on a thousand hills, and uh, certainly with Christian ministry, we've seen that. We came into being as a department six years ago with, with nothing and, and have about $3 million in endowed funds now where people have just given money because they believe in what we're doing. And so, you know, find those people who uh, God can match you with, who have a passion for what you're doing, and also have funding that they desire to invest in that type of ministry. And uh, it, it's amazing. You'll you'll find, I, I thought coming into this as a pastor where you just have to, you know, you, you preach that one sermon a year and you hate doing it, um, but, but finding out that there really are people out there that God has blessed with the ability to give and with a generous heart. And uh, so, so just let God lead you to those people and don't be discouraged. Yeah, I can't add a lot. I can't add a lot more to that other than to, just to reiterate that there are a lot of people with a lot of money that would like to give you some. <laughs> um, you know that that, um, but you just have, you just have to you just have to ask for it um, because there are some some of us you know 
aren't uh, a lot of people are in position where where they have the resources, but then maybe they don't feel called to go. But they'd like they'd like to help help someone else go, especially especially a college student um, that you know someone has has taken on and had done and has done an international experience. Maybe as a student that maybe maybe been life transforming. They want to help someone else experience that as well. Um, but also. Um, there's also resources like Scott just mentioned, maybe an endowed funds. There's scholarships available here at Sanford. If you just ask your professors and ask your department chairs, uh, there may be some funds available to help support you with that. But um, I, I wholeheartedly agree with Fish and, and Scott that um, God's going to provide if he calls you to it. So I'll, I'll share a look, go a little different direction. Um, could you put the, the Gospel Coalition article up? There you go. Yeah, one more. <coughs> There you go. So if you want to read more about this story, we, we actually did a, an article in the Gospel Coalition. But this is a, just a neat funding example. So a friend of mine uh, used to be the chief financial officer of Vapor Ministries. Anybody familiar with Vapor Ministries? They do soccer missions over in Kenya and different, different parts of the world. Um, one of the problems they were running into is, is uh, FIFA agents and agents of different professional soccer clubs were coming in promising 12, 13, 14-year-old boys and their families that they would take them to Europe and get them big contracts. And so over and over again, this was happening, and, and, uh, and a lot of these kids couldn't make teams, and they would end up getting left behind. So this is a, it's a big problem, actually. It's a form of human trafficking. So my friend, having multiple times have to get on planes and fly to Europe to, to rescue 12 and 13, 14-year-old boys that had grown up in, in the ministry, particularly in Kenya and in other places, <clears throat> just wanted to do something about it. So he and I we talked and we met several times and eventually he came up with a, an idea and again his background is finance uh, he's a finance major from the University of Alabama and um, and he realized that um, if you're you know, get, kind of getting down the weeds a little bit here but if you are a soccer club like Manchester United for example and you have a, a kid that's 10 or 11 and he stays in your organization all the way up when he becomes a full professional every single time that player gets moves from team to team, there's a transfer fee. And we're talking sometimes $100 million, very large amounts. The, the originating club gets 1% of that for the entire career. And so my friend came up with the idea of turning Vapor, since Vapor was really a developmental club, that's what they were doing, to make them into an official FIFA developmental club so that when the players do come through and they do get these opportunities, it would be a funding source. That 1% fee would go back to Vapor uh, you know, a, as a result. So um, that was step one. Step two was he had to create a safe pathway for them to get to Europe because he he's got a lot of players that are good enough to play professionally in Europe. And so what he's done is he created a professional team in the Kenyan First Division. So the, the kids, it's called Sovereign FC, Sovereign Football Club. So the kids in the ministry now aspire to play for that team. And then the best two, three, four kids off that team, they're normally 18, 19, 20 years old, then uh, what he's done is he, he's gone out and he's raised money uh, from some, a lot of different people. He's created an organization called the Travella Group. And the Travella Group is buying lower division professional teams in Europe. So, so far, he's bought Walsall Football Club in Birmingham, England. He's bought Drahagaba in uh, Ireland. And they're about to buy a team in Norway. And so the idea being is he's creating a pathway for these players. They're coming out of his ministry to play for Sovereign go from Sovereign to Drogba in Ireland, that would be the next level, and then go to Birmingham in England. And there's a, so there's a pathway for them to continue to progress in their career, all along helping them and their families, right, creating their opportunity to do that, but also providing a funding source back to the Vapor Ministries of the world uh, as they progress in their career. It's a super, super cool story. Um, again, I interviewed him. His name's Ben Boycott, and he actually lives here in Birmingham. Uh, we work with some of their teams. So like last year, we did a project for Walsall. And so we're helping some of the teams themselves become more profitable as well with, uh, with some of our students. And so we flew over to, we fly over to England every year and, and help some of their teams. We're, we're working on setting up some internship opportunities for our students to intern with some of these teams as well on the business side. But it's a, it's just, it's a really cool example, though, of, of just being really creative, taking a problem that existed and, and working within the, you know, within it all to... Uh, to create a solution. And so, again, you can read more about it in the article if, if you're interested. So, We only have a few minutes left. Um, so, Darren, can you let us know, how can churches and other Christian organizations partner with sports ministries? 
Yeah, that's a good, good question. Um, how can I, um, yeah, so I, I really the main, the main part would just be to recognize that sp when you're involved in sports, be it playing sports, be it an apparent, you know, on the sideline of youth sports, um, you know, there's, there's opportunity to connect with other people in a way that really we don't have, and you know, there's, there's, you know, I mean, so again, if you if your if your child plays on a Barwood soccer team, <laughs> you know, you're going to be around people from different cultures, people from different backgrounds, and just realizing that you're there as a, you're there as a light for Christ. You're not, you know, and so I think so many Christians forget that <laughs> in the in terms of uh, how they how they act at sporting events and things like that, and yet. Just know that that's an really is an opportunity though to connect with people because you have something that they're passionate about that you're passionate about. You could be different in every other way, but you can connect and form deep relationship around sport, and then you can use that then of course to to, to deepen the relationships in other ways. So, um, so uh, it's interesting you mentioned vapor, Micah McKelvin, longtime friend when he was first launching that. Um, we actually had him come to my church when I was a pastor and, and tell us all about it. And I would say that's another thing, too, is find people who are doing it really well and, and ask them, what can we do? How can we help? Uh, like Vapor, uh, you can help on the basic level of providing things for them to sell here that fund their ministry. In fact, if you're doing house cleaning, take it to Vapor, right? And uh, I would say then beyond that, uh, have them come speak at your church. Have them come engage with your missions groups and and uh, and ask them what what can we do? How can we help? And uh, then just jump into it. Right. Well, um, I know we have undergrad students who need to get to class, and so before we conclude, um, know that the combo credit will be up here. That it's Miriam. Um, you can find her. And um, we are um, y'all. Please show them your appreciation for coming today. So w once again, thanks for coming, and for y'all, thanks for coming and sharing. Just a reminder, uh, we do have open house the rest of the day starting from 2 o'clock, 2 to 4, and we'd love for you to come and just kind of check out the timeline and check out the document. Hope to see you at the next Bubble Voices. Y'all have a good day.